Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a Michigan courtroom where a softard is, well, trying to argue with uh, the judge about jurisdiction, but, well, ends up falling flat on his face and being called out as a moron by the judge himself and winds up being held in contempt of court because, well, he is a total freaking moron. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good afternoon. We are on the record in 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Sheboygan. We are providing public access to our docket this afternoon, both in the courtroom and also online. Our first case this afternoon is People of the State of Michigan versus Trevor McLeod. It's filed 23 6748 FH. Counsel, you want to state your appearance, please? Anthony yeah, Julian, on behalf of the people. Okay, Mr. McLeod, are you present, sir? Yeah. Do you want to come on up to the, to the table here? All right, sir. All my rights. That's fine. And, and, and uh, I'll. Uh, Okay. All right, so Mr. McLeod, this is the time and date scheduled for uh, what's called for a circuit court arraignment, the case having been bound over to this court by the district court. So you, you're here representing yourself today, is that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> what's that? Yep. Oh, whoopity do, a special appearance by a softard. Should we feel honored that you graced the court with your presence? Okay. So I'm required by law to make sure that I've taken an initial a waiver of your right to counsel in this court. Um, so I, I covered a, a pretrial hearing in the district court. So I, we talked a little bit about this, but now it's up in my court. So you've got two constitutional rights. You can have the, uh, you have the constitutional right to be represented by an attorney. And if you wanted uh, to have an attorney at public expense and qualified to have that. You also do have the right under our constitution to represent yourself. Obviously you can't do both things at the same time. Uh, so do you uh, understand your right to a lawyer, including a, a court appointed lawyer? I understand that. Okay. And uh, do you wish to represent yourself instead of having an attorney? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here um, by special appearance and I will be representing myself. Here. Okay. I'm required by law before I accept that waiver to do a couple things. One, advise you of the maximum penalties that you could face for the charges that you're in my court for. Resisting obstructing conservation officers is a high court misdemeanor punishable by up to two years in prison and or a thousand dollar fine. There's a habitual offender second notice that's been filed by the prosecutor, which would make that a felony punishable by up to three years and or a thousand dollar fine. <clears throat> And marine safety operating while intoxicated is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days and or a 100 to 500 dollars Do you understand the maximum penalty for the for the charges against you? Well, I don't even really understand why I'm here, honestly. Well, that's well, well okay. Well, that's fine. Do you, do you understand the do you understand the maximum penalty that I just explained to you? Uh, no. So, so well, um, Hold on, I can't let you represent well, yourself until I establish a couple things. Well, I, I need to establish a couple things too, honestly. Hold on, well, I can't let you represent yourself until I establish a couple things or I'm going to be in trouble. Okay. Do you understand that the maximum penalty that you could face for the charges that you're here for is up to three years in prison and or $1,000? I don't understand the nature and cause of the action against me. So I what is it that, that you don't understand? Do you not understand how long three years is? or how much the fine is that I've articulated? Can you tell me what it is you're going to understand the nature and cause of the action against me because we don't establish jurisdiction. I have a question for you, uh, you smooth brain, soft hard. How much glue did you eat when you were in kindergarten? Because I think that filled your head rather than the gray matter we're all supposed to have because, well, if you were piloting a boat in Michigan while intoxicated and got caught for it, uh, then Michigan would have the jurisdiction over you. Do you not understand that? That's not what I'm asking you right now. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you place whatever objections you want on the record, Mr. McLeod. I promise you that. Okay. Can we just go one step at a time? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So one step at a time. I need to establish that you're exercising your constitutional right to represent yourself validly. So for me to do that, 
somebody might decide they want to do that and they really don't understand what's at stake. So I have to, I have to establish on the record that you do understand. What's at stake. Well, I think you have to establish on the record first that you can have jurisdiction. That's been okay. questioned. It was questioned in the preliminary hearing. It was never addressed. I'll address that today. Well, it has to be addressed before anything can move forward, obviously. Okay, so you want me to explain to you why I have jurisdiction? Yes. Okay, let, let's you do that jurisdiction first. Jurisdiction itself. <clears throat> sure. Okay. This court has subject matter jurisdiction over crimes punishable by more than a year as, as the court of general jurisdiction under the Michigan Constitution of 1963. The people voted uh, to ratify that constitution. That is the, that is the uh, underlying law of our sovereign state of Michigan. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so is that a jurisdiction under criminal, um, or is it no? Yeah, charge? yeah, it's a criminal charge against you, and I have jurisdiction over that. Okay, so the Constitution of the United States only grants you two criminal jurisdictions: one's common law, and one is military tribunal venue under Article One, Section Eight, Clause Seventeen of the Constitution. Which of these two criminal jurisdictions is that? Hey, dumbass, uh, let me stop you right there before you humiliate yourself even further. You're talking about the federal level, not the state level. At the state level, they do have jurisdiction, you complete moron. Simply because you committed a crime at the state level, not the federal level. If you had committed a crime at the federal level, then they would not have jurisdiction over you. Do you get that, or do you want me to explain it a bit slower to you? You're not in federal court. It's not a federal crime you've been charged with. You've been charged with violating the law of the state of Michigan. And, um, hey, what's going on over there? What are you doing, sir? I'm, I'm trying to make sure that this is going live. It's not happening. There's something messed up with your film, and I'm trying to straighten it out. I was just checking to see if it was recording or not. Sit down. Sit down. You're disrupting my courtroom. Sorry, sir. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's live. Any more disruptions, I'm going to ask you to leave. So, common law. Cloud, you're, you're in a state court. You're charged with violating a law of the state of Michigan. And that, is that a statutory jurisdiction? What is it? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a statute. It's and, a, okay, uh, so. and, this, and this court is duly authorized under the Article 6 of the Michigan Constitution. So, that's my jurisdiction. Okay, so now I need to make sure that you're establishing your, your right to represent yourself. So do you understand the maximum penalty that you could face if you're convicted as charged? Three years in prison or $1,000 fine? Well, I have another question because um, the statutory jurisdiction doesn't exist under the Constitution. Are you sure you want to represent yourself in this case? Because uh, to put it quite simply... Uh, you're way out of your league right here, considering that, well, you're not in the federal jurisdiction at this moment. You are under state jurisdiction because you violated the laws of that state, you freaking moron. I mean, the uh, federal court system is not going to try every single case throughout the United States. That's why there are local municipalities that will handle the local business. I mean, it's a trickle-down effect. That way it's all distributed across the board. That way the system is not overstressed more so than it already is, you lame brain. So in order for me to tell you, defend myself, could you please tell me where the published rules of conduct are uh, for criminal statutory jurisdiction or where I can find the nature and cause of this jurisdiction or how this information exists. No, I don't even understand what you're asking. So you're saying this is a statutory <laughs> jurisdiction under what the statutes of Michigan, correct? Mr. McLeod, I've told you what my jurisdiction is. General the, jurisdiction. The people, the people of the state of Michigan voted to convene a constitutional convention in 1961. Sure. There was a constitutional convention in 1961 and 1962. They proposed a state constitution. The voters of the state of Michigan ratified that in 1963. Article 6 establishes the judicial power. And the circuit court is a court under that judicial power, of Article 6 of the state constitution. The legislative power is exercised by the, represent, by the House of Representatives and the state Senate. They have passed statutes that the governor has signed. The prosecutor's office is alleging that you have violated those statutes. And so you're here in my court. I have subject matter jurisdiction over those crimes. 
I have personal jurisdiction over you because you've, alleged, you've been alleged to have committed them in our county. That's my jurisdiction. So Mr. McLeod, do you want to represent yourself? Do you understand the maximum penalty that you could face for three years in prison and or a thousand dollar fine? I can see why his attorney would drew. Oops. Hang on. Someone in the prosecutor's office is not muted. I'm going to remove you from the meeting at this time. Oh. Prosecutor's office is generally allowed to attend, to observe. They've participated. I'm removing them from the hearing. Mr. McLeod, do you understand the maximum penalty that you could face? One second. Okay, so when enforcement of mere statutes, judges of all courts do not act judicially and are thus protected, thus are not protected, qualified by limited immunity. And that's Owen versus the city. I just want to state a few things for the record since you're claiming this is a jurisdiction under statutory law. Hang on. Hang on. Can, Mr. McLeod, can we back up? Look, look at me for a second. Can we talk here? I, I, I challenge subject matter jurisdiction and nothing can go forward until that's addressed. You're saying- I did address it and I denied your objection. I have subject matter jurisdiction. It doesn't exist under the constitution. Your objection is noted. Right. So Mr. McLeod, do you understand? It? Let me let me explain to you. Sure. Um, sometimes, <laughs> as I said, people might want to represent themselves, but let's say they have limited intellectual capacity and they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Judge, that was a good one on your part. I mean, this dude does have limited intellectual capacity. That much is for sure. I have to establish that they know what's going on before I can allow them to represent themselves. I'm required to establish, do, do you comprehend, do you know the maximum penalty that you could face if you're convicted as a result of this charge? Three years in prison or a thousand dollar fine. Do you understand that, Mr. McFaul? <clears throat> so... I'd like to state for the record that Mr. McLeod, stop. The court can be stop, Mr. McLeod. If you don't understand it, I'm going to revoke your right to represent yourself and have an attorney represent you because I can't establish that you know what you're doing. So, can do you know I've the maximum that. penalty that you would face? Um, I've challenged this court's jurisdiction. You haven't established it yet. You said you have a statutory jurisdiction, which doesn't exist under the Constitution. I'm trying to figure out where I stand with this, so I, I can't. Answer any of your questions until you answer some of mine. That's not how it works. Are you refusing to answer my question? No, I'm. I'm, I'm then so answer it. Do you understand the maximum penalty that you face for this charge? So judges who become involved in enforcing Mr. McLeod, I have other matters. Mr. McLeod, agency. What's that? You, you know, I understand you want to object to things, and you're going to be allowed to object to things. Okay, sure. but we have to do things one step at a time. And I do have other cases today. I'm not going to entertain this for like a whole hour. I've got other cases going on. If you want to dig in your heels and just make this real complicated or real difficult, we could do that. And I can hold you in contempt and you'll go back to a jail cell for a while. No, 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 I, I don't wish to be held in contempt. I'm just wishing to exercise okay. my Sixth Amendment right. That's fine. And so I, before I can, I can cite, let you under, I can, I, can can, laws, I can cite laws that will, will, will show you that the, the exercise of a right can be converted into a crime. Uh, dude, I don't think you are even beyond the stage of uh, learning how to be able to write your name with a crayon, let alone being able to uh, research laws. I mean, good freaking grief. What you stated about uh, that case law earlier was nothing but a bunch of garbage to begin with. So you might as well just go ahead and go back to the kiddie table and uh, let the adults handle the... Uh, legal jargon and everything like that. I mean, you're way out of your league at this point. I'm trying to get, understand the nature and cause of the action against me. You're not clarifying it enough to where I can comprehend it, as you say. You don't comprehend the maximum penalty that you would face. I'm, I'm not answering any of those questions until you establish that this is a court of the Constitution has jurisdiction under these jurisdictions. I established it. I told you. You might think I'm wrong and you can appeal. There's no the such thing as a statutory appeal. jurisdiction. Mr. McLeod, let me make this simple for you. Did you do you ever watch? Uh, let me make this simple for you. Sure. I'm going to ask you this question one more time. One more time. Okay. Two things are going to happen. You are either going to answer my question or I'm going to hold you summarily in contempt. 
and the court officer will bring you to a jail cell and we'll talk about it tomorrow. You understand so, that? So, Mr. McLeod, for Mr. McLeod, two things are going to happen. You're going to answer my question or you're going to jail for summary contempt for not complying with the court's request. Do you, Mr. McLeod, understand that the maximum penalty for the charge against you is three years in prison and or $1,000 fine? I don't understand the charges. Right, Mr. McLeod accept is a contempt charges. court taken into custody. Really? That's it. Protecting my rights is going to solve all this. This is not true. You know, you guys are following unconstitutional orders. Following unlawful orders is not constitutional at all. Mr. McLeod's in contempt and sentenced to one day in prison. Mr. McLeod, your sentence is one day in jail. We'll reconvene tomorrow and get you noticed. This is unconstitution. I did nothing wrong except the question exercise my rights. Well, well, dude, uh, just because you don't understand uh, how the justice system works doesn't mean it's unconstitutional. It just means, well, you have to educate yourself in how it actually works. But I guess that would be just asking way too much of a smooth brain soft heart anyway because like i got established before well this guy i don't think he's made it past kindergarten yet i mean how is he expected to uh, learn the law and everything like that when he's still uh, uh munching on crayons at this point in his life i mean there's just no hope for this guy so at any rate guys i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i will see you on the next one Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?